Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. Juma Mubarak to you all. Bismillah. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. In Ahmaduhu and Astainahu and Astaufiru. On Audu Billahi, men Shururi and Fusina, men say Ati Amalina. May Yad Hila who fell out with the Lala, who may you little who fell out with the Lala. What a shadow la ilaha illa law. What the Hula Sharika lahu. What a shadow Anna Muhammad and Arabdu who are a Sulu. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. All praise is due to Allah from whom we seek help and forgiveness. We seek refuge with Allah from the evil of our own souls and from those of our bad deeds. Whomsoever Allah guides will never be led astray, and whomsoever Allah leads astray, no one can guide. I bear witness that there is no God but Allah who has no partner and is the one. And I bear witness that Muhammad is Allah's servant and messenger. May Allah's peace and blessings be upon him. Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu attaqullah wa kulu qawlan sadeeda yuslih lakum a'malakum wa yaghfir lakum dhunubakum wa man yuta'illaha wa rasooluhu faqad faza fawzan azima O ye who believe be mindful of Allah and say which is right. Say that which is right and speak the truth. Allah will bless your deeds for you and forgive your sins. And whoever obeys Allah and the Messenger of Allah has truly achieved a great triumph. Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu attaqullah haqqa tuqatihi wa la tamutunna illa wa antum muslimun. Know ye who believe be mindful of Allah. Be mindful of Allah and be mindful of Allah in the way that Allah deserves. And do not die except in the state of full submission and faithfulness to Allah. Rabbi shrah li sadri wa sili amri. Pray that Allah may open my chest and make this task easy, uh, that my uh, knots of my tongue may be loosened and that my speech may be understood. And glory be to you, O Allah. Glory be to you alone that we have no knowledge except that which you have taught us. Verily, you are indeed the all-knowing, the all-wise. Again, assalamu alaikum. It's a blessing to be here with you wherever you may be. Inshallah, may Allah find you well. The Prophet was reported as uh, having advised a person once that that take advantage of five things before five. He told this person, take advantage of your youth before your old age, your health before your sickness, your wealth before your poverty, your free time before your busyness, and your life before your death. And share in this beautiful hadith a, uh, a such a message that not only is one that helps us to maybe discern and to be able to live a meaningful life holistically and in general, but is a hadith that really does speak to each of us individually and should be reflected on and processed individually. Because oftentimes when we look at this hadith, when we hear this hadith, because of the groupings that we've been put in or society has put in or we put ourselves in, uh, whether it's like, oh, we're elderly, uh, or we're still young, or we're, uh, you know, fit, and we're not fit, whatnot, we will sometimes look at this hadith and discount it, we will not take away the full aspect of its meaning and uh, cherry pick from it, or be able to take its full benefit, we will be looking at this hadith and saying, well, I'm elderly, you know, I don't have, uh, my youth is no longer uh, something I have, so that doesn't apply to me, or hey, I'm not doing too well, um, in terms of my uh, health, I'm chronically ill, or I have these different things, I don't have uh, health, so that doesn't apply to me, or hey, I'm not a wealthy person, that doesn't apply, or hey, I'm always busy, I don't have any free time, so that doesn't apply. And unfortunately, that kind of binary thinking, that kind of categorizing does a disservice to the substance of hadith, of this hadith, which speaks to uh, our human experience and our full human experience, which is actually on a spectrum. So we look at our youth and our old age, our health and our sickness, our wealth and our poverty, our free time busyness are all on a spectrum, just like our lives. And so when our Prophet is lifting up each of these things, each of these things that is interconnected, you know, your, your youth and your old age are connected to your health and your sickness and um, your free time and your busyness and all these different things ultimately culminate into taking advantage of thing, making the most of your life before your death. And when the Prophet says, take advantage of five before five, or make the most of five before five, and in this hadith, he's not saying, you know, because these things are expiring, because these things are not, uh, you know, are not unlimited, that these things will uh, go away at some point in time, that to make the most of these things, but not in a way that is heedless, not in a way that is ignorant. And, and he lifts this up, uh, in, in context of the Quran as well, where Allah says that that on that day, on that day of accounting, we will all be brought to account of and asked about 
of the blessings that we were given and what did we do with those blessings and so uh also some invokes within us a and, and implores within us a sense of mindfulness that take advantage and make the most of wherever you might be on the spectrum what you do have of each of these things make the most of that because there will be a time where we will not be able to enjoy these we will not be able to act on these and where we'll have to stand before Allah with that which we had done and with our resume and our CV that was set of life and be able to attest for that which we had done and so uh, thinking about how this hadith speaks to this element of mindfulness that uh, not just a general mindfulness like oh I'm in life and I'm you know yeah life will expire and whatnot I, I should be a little bit better but for each of us mindful cognizant because each of our individual experiences our individual circumstances are all very different from one another so when we look at this hadith what does it speak to you with respect to your particular circumstance your particular space in in life and how do you kind of interpret it and read it uh, in in that context and as we as we have shared in the past that in the Quran, Allah tells us that Kulu nafsin that every uh, soul shall taste death. Verily, every soul shall taste death. And an expanded reading or commentary on this is that not just every soul shall taste death at a finite point, but every soul is tasting death, that every soul is uh, experiencing it, that from the moment we are born, that countdown has started, that with each passing hour, with each passing minute, a little bit of us is dying, that we are experiencing death in the active sense. And so when we get to that uh, that point of death, it's not just a finite point, but it's the completion of a process. And so when we think about this hadith in the, count, in the, in the context of that, that taking advantage of that which we have, making the most of that which we have, whatever it may be, before this life ends and before we are experiencing death and why take advantage why make the most of these things because of the fact that these are actions our way of living life are things that we've been given this amana this body that we've been given this life this thing that we've been trusted with uh, the human experience uh, it's it's not one without account and we'll be brought to it before allah to um uh, to answer for how did we treat this similar to if you think about when you go rent a car you you'll go you'll rent this vehicle and you'll take it around, you'll turn it back in. If you've beat up this vehicle and not treated it uh, with care, with caution, and um, drove it heedlessly and recklessly, they, they will, you know, uh, they will, they'll charge you for it. They will, you know, bring you to account for that. But if you take care of it in a dutiful way, if you do the most that you can with it and uh, still treat it in a careful way and turn it back without any of these uh, major issues or whatnot, um, you won't, you won't have any problems. And similarly, you know, we are almost to figuratively speak, leasing the uh, keys of life from Allah. We have, we're driving these rental cars known as our, our bodies through this journey of life. And ultimately we will have to return it to uh, the one who gave it to us. We'll have to turn the keys back in. We'll have to turn these bodies back into Allah. And what will be the state of these things? What will be our condition that we return these to Allah? And, and uh, this, this hadith lifts up for us that, that, that uh, aspect of needing to be not just aware of the moment, but also aware of that which is to come and how we can improve or how we can make the most of what's in this moment for in preparation for the time that is ahead. So again, the process I'm listed up those five things. And the first one, youth before your old age. Uh, it goes without saying again, that uh, in looking at this on a spectrum, it's easy to be able to take so many different meanings. But in general, when you look at uh, this from a normative understanding that one's youth before their old age we just look at the finite nature of our lives that when people get older when things get older when creation gets older whatever it is and gets older certain things do not function as well as they may have at the earlier part of it um, and when it comes to the human experience we see when when we get older when we do experience older age we will see a diminishing of some of our functions and abilities, whether it's our mobility and our motor functions, or whether it is cognitive processing, whether it is our energy levels, um, whatever it may be, also, especially with respect to just um, that which we have that's external. So all these different features that we have, all, all of the stuff, um, over time, it will uh, diminish. It will naturally you know, run its course and not be able to uh, be the same level that it was before. We can try as many products and any de-aging things and whatnot, um, but we can't fight death in a sense. You can't fight fate in that way that it will not, it will, it will ultimately come to pass. But looking at when our youth before our old age, how we 
experience it in the sense, where are we in this moment? Whether we are elderly or senior citizens, or even if we're just you know young youth, kids, uh, fresh out of college, whatever it may be, how are we making the most of that which we have? Whether on one side of life spectrum that we are not uh, youth anymore, but what are the things that we still do have? What are the things that we did lose? Being, being mindful and being able to be honest with ourselves that we're aware and we're cognizant of that which we used to have, but we no longer have. Um, making us mindful of what do we still have? We might've lost our mobility, we might've lost our uh, eyesight or our hearing or any of these different things that do naturally will dissipate with our age, but what do we still have? And at the same time, on the other side, being able to be mindful of those around us, those uh, who are our loved ones, those who we see out and around who are in their older phases of life, who are elderly, what are the things that they've lost and what can we, what, that we still have, whether it is our mobility, whether it is our ability to jump around and do all these different things, um, what are those things that we can take stock of? And so, again, in a way that each of these things we take advantage of, make the most of, not in a way just to go crazy, just to go YOLO and you know, be heedless of a law, but to do in a way that, uh, that is, is most befitting to and most pleasing to Allah. And we know that Allah has mentioned in the Quran that he's created humanity, not that for anything except that they may worship Allah. And worship in our faith is one that is holistic. It is doing, it is not just on the prayer mat, but it is holistic and uh, being an active member of society, being able to help people being able to do all these different things. And so being a good person, all of this stuff is, is incorporated within worship. And so when we look at each of these elements and taking advantage and making the most of them, it's under that umbrella of being able to do those things that Allah has advised us and to worship Allah in the best way possible. So when we look at our youth before our old age, before that uh, the, the age, uh, age kind of kicks in, what are the things that we can make note of? Number two, take your health before your sickness. That uh, in a day and age such as now where it, you know, one's sickness is not just outward, it's not something that they just wear, but sickness especially is one that is not discriminating. Uh, this illness or diseases are not discriminating of uh, one's age or anything like that. We see people who are at the heights of different parts of society or, or kind of, you know, look the healthiest or whatnot, but they may have uh, those sicknesses, those illnesses, those diseases that are undetectable, that are under the surface. And so when we take advantage of our health before our sickness, it doesn't just mean that, oh, you know, um, we're healthy right now. And so we're just going to do the most that we can. But how can we also stay healthy? How can we try our best to be people who are um, lifting up our health and prioritizing it, whether it's eating right or going to the doctor, getting these checkups or whatnot, but also just recognizing that what, what uh, do we lose in that sickness? And if we are people who are chronically ill or uh, lost our mobility or experiencing a you know, kind of a disease or anything like that, what still do we have? You know, if it's, if it's something that's made us bedridden, do we still have functions of our, of our eyes or other sensory functions? What, what do we still have? in that sense, and being able to make the most of that. Um, so finding the value even in that which is seen as devalued, but importance of being able to recognize the time when we do have health to not be ignorant of sickness, but to be very aware. How can we be able to um, not just prepare, but how can we be able to do the most that we can before something like that may happen? How do we, how do we use our health for the most um, in, the, in the best way? Number three, your wealth before your poverty. It doesn't uh, you know, implicitly mean that, okay, if you're not wealthy, this doesn't apply to you, but thinking about what is the wealth that we have, even if we're just living paycheck to paycheck, that in our society and our time now, wealth is not just your money. Wealth is also your knowledge. Wealth is your ability. Wealth is all these different things before your poverty. Taking advantage of that, which we may have, and even if a little bit, um, it doesn't uh, you know, making the most of your wealth in Islam is not just building the biggest houses or it's not just make, you know, spending as much as you can. Making the most of your wealth in Islam is living the most economically, living in a way that is most beneficial to not just you, um, but to the world around, to all the people uh, that are uh, in your community and, and beyond. So how are you using your wealth in a way that is maximized? before we experience poverty, whatever it may look like. We're in an economy that goes up and down uh, where you see people who are you know, at the top of 
uh, any kind of like wealth level or, or stratus and, and, you know, they come down uh, the next day. We see you know, when it comes to Bitcoin or whatnot, people may be super rich on one day and then by the next morning, they're completely have lost all of their wealth. And so thinking about wealth is also a, a very liminal thing. It's not something that will be very permanent. Um, and it's not something that will last till the end. How do we make the most of uh, the wealth that we have? And thinking about like, if we don't, if we are on the spectrum that is more impoverished than wealthy per se, what are the things that we still do have? Uh, the Prophet Sallam advised us, don't look to the person who has more to you, look at the person who has less than you and see that even if you're living very tight means, but uh, what is that you know, meal that you're eating that's maybe 10, 15, $20, uh, you know, what does that look like for somebody who is in a less fortunate circumstance and being able to be mindful that man, like this 10 to 15 or 15 to $20 meal I'm enjoying could actually in another country feed uh, an entire family for a month. So thinking about how does, how do we have enjoy that relationship with respect to our uh, money, with respect to that which we have been given, even if it's not much, but how do we make the most of that? Number four, your free time before your busyness. So we oftentimes get caught up in the rat race. We oftentimes are working crazy schedules, 40 hours, 60 hours, or even if we're full-time parents staying at home, you know, maybe not getting a lot of free time, but the emphasis the process some said is, maximizing on your free time before your busyness and your free time is not just that which is uh, to be spent in a way that is unhealthy that is detrimental to your body um, we see this in our society where uh, a coping mechanism of just the the nature of how busy schedules are people will uh, will will kind of lapse to with respect to default to drinking or uh, substances or other kinds of risky behaviors that will serve as a catharsis of sorts to just release because of all the um, anxiety and stress that their work has built up. And for us, in a sense, taking advantage of those that free time does not just mean, all right, let's just occupy with doing. Uh, that free time is also something that can be intended with respect with respect to rest. The process has taught us that. Uh, your body has a right over you, and that right is to sleep and to rest. So uh, taking advantage of your free time before your busyness, you might be working insane hours and you might not be sleeping too much, but you want to spend that little free time you have doing something completely different when it actually might be that you need to just rest and recharge. So taking advantage of that free time that you do have to rest, or as our Prophet Sallallahu had taught us that uh, you know, your, your spouses and your family have a right over you. And that right is to uh, have your company, have your time. So are we using that free time in a way that is fitting to Allah? Um, and are we doing the most that we can? It doesn't mean that we have to be fully engaged in everything with every single thing that we're doing. Uh, and there's no off switch, but how are we using our free time in a way that allows us to be the best versions of ourselves? And then lastly, the process on toss that take advantage of your life before your death. Um, as we said, death is going to be something that not only will be experienced by all of us, as uh, Allah says, that you know, all of this is going to be gone away, uh, except Allah will remain at the end, that all of this is going to be gone. Death is uh, inevitable. It's always going to be, it's a, it's, a, it's a given, it's a fact. There's not many things in life that are givens, but death is one of them. And how do we make the most of our life before our death? Because we know that once, that, once death happens, once we stand before Allah gathered together, we won't get a do-over that like, oh, we should have done this. We, oh, we're being asked about certain things. Being mindful that that moment of death is not just the end of every single thing. And uh, that's it. That's a wrap. But death is the first station with respect to then meeting Allah, that how are we going to meet Allah? And so preparing for death is actually preparing for a new life if we look at it from the Islamic context. And so in this context, when we look at our youth, our health, our wealth, our free time, seeing how we can make the most of a meaningful life before death. So inshallah, let us make the intention to make the most of these because life is not, at least from Islamic perspective and, and in general, life is not about the number or the quantity of anything. When it comes to the quality, it comes to how we live, it comes to the more substantive aspect of it. And the Prophet has told us time and time again, each of these things that we are taking advantage of, it's not for anything else, but for the sake of seeking Allah's pleasure. So when we're taking advantage of our youth, our health, our wealth, our free time, our life, all of these different things to be done in a way that's not harming anybody, to be done in a way that's not harming ourselves, that's not harming the things that Allah has entrusted us in. It's not harming the creation of Allah. And it's one that is to be done that lives up to the aspiration and lives up to the standard that Allah set of humanity being created 
for the sake of worshiping Allah and do all of these things that we try to maximize on, do they fit into that space? Uh, so as we look at this hadith individually, wherever we are in the spectrum of youth and old age or health and sickness or wealth and poverty or free time and busy, wherever we may be on that, being able to take a look at what is something that I do still have of these things. It can be as rudimentary, as foundational, as your sensory perceptions, as your ability to hear, as anything that's just that, that we sometimes overlook. And in what way can we take advantage or make the most of that? How can we do a little bit more with what we've been given, whether that is taking in something that's beneficial, whether that's helping somebody, whether it is utilizing these for a good purpose. And again, underlying all of these uh, as aspects is this essential aspect to be mindful, to be aware, and to be knowledgeable, not just of what is the circumstance of the general biology of humans, but of oneself and where one is at. And we're fortunate to be in a faith tradition that has each uh, in our day and in our in our worship uh, pegged into our, our lives, uh, intentional worship, intentional mindfulness, intentional meditation when it comes to just being able to reflect. So let us make the most of this time, inshallah, uh, and make the most of those things that are uh, a part of our faith experience, that are part of our life, but in a way that allows us to take advantage of all of these things and more, inshallah. So may Allah enable us to be a people who are mindful and aware of what we've been given. May Allah enable us to take advantage of all that we've been given in a way that is pleasing before it departs, whether it concerns our age, our health, our wealth, our free time, or any of our breathing moments, and allow us to leave this Jummah better than we came into it, allow us to leave every place that we enter better, uh, le allow us to leave every place that we enter um, better than we had come when we had entered it, and allow us to leave more mindful, inshallah. So as we depart, uh, please think about what is one thing from each of these things when we send to ourselves Wherever you might be on life spectrum, you might be 10 years old, 15, 20, 65, 80, 90, you still have an element of youth. You still have an element of health. You still have an element of wealth. You still have an element of free time. You still have an element of life in the full spectrum. And in what way can we take advantage by making the most of it? In what way can we use that as a way to become pleasing and be more pleasing to our Lord, inshallah. Our Lord, accept this from us. Indeed, you are the all-hearing, the all-knowing. I mean, again, assalamu alaikum, praying that you all have a blessed rest of your Jummah.